within the time I've been back, someone threatened me with a gun. Yeah, almost got my ass shot. What's up, y'all? Welcome or welcome back to the channel. My name is Kunle, and I'm here today uh, just to talk about the reverse culture shock slash environment shock since I've been back uh, from Japan. As you already know, I'm moving to Japan, and I was just there for the last three months. It was enough time for me to really settle in and really get used to Japanese uh, culture and way of living. And so being back in America has been a shock in many ways. So I wanted to cover that, um, kind of let y'all know um, where I'm at and how I feel about it. So I do have some notes here. So if you see me turning to the side, it's because I have notes. The first thing I noticed being back is that we are in the English bubble in the Western world, specifically in America. Um, we, we, we get by with English and we don't really have to know any other languages, uh, especially with like apps like Google Translate. And so what I've noticed is that being in like a metropolitan place like Tokyo, where like people are coming from all around the world, um, it was every the people that I met, uh, it was very um, normal that the people were like bilingual, trilingual, they, they just had other language abilities. And I think uh, that's very important to see, uh, see the world in a certain light to be able to understand different perspectives because language is tied with cultural and uh, uh, societal norms. And so it's not just the language you're learning, but you're learning everything about the society. And while in America, Spanish is growing, um, as far as like the uh, another dominant spoken language in uh, America, uh, I don't think our school system, the American school system does enough to really push cross cultural communication um, to really prepare kids for the global world because it's not just America. That sometimes Americans act as if America is the only country in the world and that uh, have, have a pompous attitude about being American. Um, but yeah, it's just very interesting to be in that, um, another space, another country to see America in a different light. Which leads me to my next point. Uh, just watching uh, the news, world news, uh, like NH NHK in Japan, it was kind of a trip uh, to see American politics on the TV because like it just looks like a drama or something like uh, I remember while I was there that was the time uh, Donald Trump uh, the assassination attempt happened and just watching from afar like in another country it was like wow that's insane like this is like a reality TV show or something so it was, it was just kind of shocking to see that um because when you're in America, you you don't really, you, that's just normalized. Um, you don't really think much about it, but seeing it from a third person perspective was a trip. Uh, the third thing is lens of race. Um, what I've noticed is that race is like very put forth in America. Like it's always on, at least for in my case, like my socialization has brought me up to think about race first before anything else. And I'm trying to actively change that. Um, it's way better than what it used to be because I do know that race was a concept made to justify things like slavery. And so um, it's not real. It's not real at all. And it seemed like uh, the uh, people who colonized the world, the white colonizers, they went around and kind of promoted that everywhere they went um, to justify everything. And so, but especially in America where slavery was so dominant and so uh, disgusting, um, is, is something that's pushed in our society first. You see someone's color first before you see their character. And it's hard to escape that. It's hard to escape it when you're in it, in it. So what I've noticed is in Japan, I didn't have that. Like it was a, it is just a different type of situation. I wasn't thinking about race. It's Japan and majority of the population is Japanese, but um, if I see someone else of a different ethnic background, um, I wouldn't think much of it. Race was not the first thing that popped in my head because 
race is very much a, an American construct and yes yeah, it's, it's it was very liberating to not have to think about that because when you think about that first you think about the biases and the stereotypes uh, that come with it so it's like an unconscious effort you don't even know you're doing it and you treat people different you treat people very different um, even though you may not know it so um, definitely something that was interesting uh, the fourth thing that ties in with that is I'm constantly reminded that I'm black like when I'm in America I'm constantly reminded that I'm black um, I can't just live as a human being first it's a black human being and so what I noticed in Japan is that I didn't have that I didn't have that like extra weight on me of uh, or, or just feeling that um, I'm a black person first before I'm a human and people kind of just with, with Japan this societal construct is Japanese people are at the top of the social hierarchy it's it's Japan um, it's not great that sometimes they mistreat uh, foreigners but I mean that's the thing it's foreigners they don't discriminate by race like they would in America um, and I would take discrimination as a foreigner rather than discrimination as a black man because you know I can't change this I love myself I love everything about me I would not change my ethnic background for anything, but um, I can't control it. And the American society, um, they don't they don't treat black people well. Uh, they never have since the start of this country. So with Japanese uh, in the Japanese society, it wasn't built on race. It was built on other values and other other things um and so when i was there i was most the most liberated i've been in my life because i wasn't thinking about that i didn't feel mistreated as a as a person yeah it's it's just easier to live in japan um as a black man because the system wasn't built against me because of my race it was it is built against me in some ways because i'm a foreigner but um, knowing Japanese really, uh, it b bridges that crater of untrust of foreigners coming into Japan. Um, because some foreigners, they do ruin the experience. I understand that. They do, um, do stuff that doesn't really make sense to do. Like the Logan, Logan Paul situation with, uh, going to the forest, but, um, sometimes like when you really are a productive person in that country, like it's respect. When you actually learn the language and the culture where you respect it, it's respect. I get more respect in Japan and that's why I'm moving there. This is more of like environmental. So all my life I've lived in, I was born and raised in Washington state, um, 253-206 stand up. But um, with that, my nose was always congested and it always was like running. Like I always needed tissue. If people know me, like they know I always carry tissue with me. I'm always blowing my nose. And so what I've come to realize is that um, when I went to Oklahoma, it did get better, but I was still experiencing the same type of, um, the same things. It, it was, it, I, I still had runny nose, but it was, it was better to an extent. But when I went to Japan, like that, my, my, my breathing, my, I could breathe through my nose more, um, significantly better. And it was the craziest trip. But then I realized like, oh, there's, it's probably like Washington pollination or like just the, how cold it is it can get over here. Um, so all my life I've, I've like lived with this disability of not being able to breathe through my nose, which by the way, affected my track and field career. That's another story though. Uh, we still made it though. Um, but in Japan, I can breathe better. The environment's just like, I don't know, it just works for me. So um, that was very liberating because 
Japan is somewhere I wanted to live in for a long time and to know that I'm like my quality of life will improve significantly like that's how I know I'm in alignment with the universe so I'm just I'm happy I'm excited about that it's really uh, it sucks to be back in Washington for that aspect but you know you take it you take the good with the bad what I've noticed is that like Tokyo specifically like the city is very vibrant there's like so much going on there's so much lights the the atmosphere is not as vibrant um especially because it's always raining over here always cloudy so um it, it's just really nice to be in that type of environment as someone who's trying to expand on my creative endeavors so uh, a lot of inspiration to pull from i, I I've, I've been traveling a, a, a good amount since i've been back so i've gone to atlanta i've gone to chicago i've gone to portland um, but one thing I, I'm, I'm not going to give, so one thing I love about America is that America is the birthplace of black culture. And in my opinion, I feel like black culture is the most influential culture in the world. And I, when I say black culture, I mean American black culture. So, um, people are always pulling for it from it and not giving black people credit, but another story. Um, but with that, I think it's a vibe, like there's, there's a certain vibe in here, um, especially within the hip hop scene. When I was in Chicago, we were riding in the car, someone said to put on photosynthesis by Saba. In the song, uh, he was referencing Lakeshore Drive and we were, we was riding down Lakeshore Drive. So it's like, it was a vibe just with the water uh, to the right of us and then you know, photosynthesis, that's my song. I, I, I mess with Saba. That, go check out Saba if you don't know. Um, but yeah, it was a vibe. It's something that you cannot recreate in any other place. Black culture is American culture. So, and that's, that's like, that's like my base. And so I can, I can never, um, yeah, I, you can never recreate that anywhere else because um, it's a special thing. It's a special culture. America is not the safest place. I think that's already established. Japan is very safe. I, I found myself going on walks at like 2 a.m. Um, not 2 a.m. At like 12, 12 a.m. Just going on walks because, uh, because I could. Like I did it because I could. And I had like my headphones on and I was just chilling. I didn't have to worry about anybody doing nothing. I didn't have to worry about anybody bothering me. So. Um, in America, I, I really got to keep my eyes peeled and like really be intentional about what I'm doing because it's not as safe. Like, um, within the, within the time I've been back, um, I was threatened, someone threatened me with a gun. Um, that's a story for another time, but yeah, almost got my ass shot. Going back and forth, um, it, it reminded me of Maslow's hierarchy. It's a diagram I'll show right here. But basically, you take care of your base needs and you'll be able to find self-actualization, which is the top of it. And that includes um, morality, creativity, spon spontaneity, acceptance, experience, purpose, meaning, and inner potential. And what I found is in Japan, I was able to like meet a lot of my needs better than I would have in America, better than I do in America. And so the ultimate goal for me at this time in my life is to be able to just be more creative. And I just found that a lot, just being in Japan, having a lot of my needs taken care of, like I was more creative. I was, I was more happy. Like there's no other way to say it. Um, it's just, it's just different over there. If you're if you're black in America, um, I would definitely encourage you to go outside the country and check it out because other countries treat black people way better. Trust me. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna end it there. Um, I hope y'all enjoyed the video. Make sure you like, comment, share, and subscribe. And you know, um, we're on this journey. We're on this journey to just making it, um, that self-actualization. And to do that, I'm following my intuition. So 
So I hope y'all stick around, keep keep up with me, and y'all have a beautiful day. Stay up.